kind of just the kettlebells. Let's just talk about GPP in general, yeah, just the conditioning stuff like that. That was, uh, uh, I would always call them GPP. Yeah, but my interest in this stuff started probably 10 years ago when uh, my father had a heart attack. Yeah, and he was 58. His father had a heart attack and he was 58. I was 30, so I figured, you know, 20 years to figure something out here. And uh, I think I think I'm ahead of the schedule a little bit. So I first started, just started doing, yeah, I was just doing ordinary weight training routine, started doing uh, cardio at the end of the workout to get on the elliptical or stair climber. But then it was working, you know, I was getting in shape, but uh, it'll kill you slowly. I mean, just a freaking board, you can't take it. You're like a rat on a, on a wheel. It's just horrible. It was worse, I was on a treadmill, I'm thinking, man, you could just walk outside, just walk in the gym, touch the door, and go home. That's better than walking on a treadmill. You've got to do something to have a little fun with uh, the condition. And that's all the GPP is. It's just that stuff. Uh, people like the idea of GPP stuff that's barbaric. Anything involved with a sledgehammer or something that, uh, you know, you can't find in a store. That's kind of where I was. You know, when I was an athlete, I was in great shape. A lot of guys didn't even lift weights. They were all phenomenal shape. So a lot of stuff I could do outside the gym to get in good shape. And uh, one of the first things I found was the kettlebell. I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, the first thing I made up was a, a tea handle, just to try the swings and get an idea of the weight I needed. And I wound up finding uh, an adjustable one. Started out with a round weight at about the 50 pound range. And uh, the swing is the most basic exercise. Yeah. The swing's real simple. I, uh, I know the swing has become a lot more technically. Uh, there are finer points now that it's on the internet, but uh, basically the swing in between the legs. This is how I learned it from my paddle tapes. This is still how I do it. And you can, you can see it's a pretty good posterior chain exercise. And uh, you, keep a, uh, you keep a neutral spine. You keep a good arch down there. It's a safe exercise. thought it as the basis of uh, all well, the kettlebell, all the kettlebell stuff that I do. You have that basic neutral spine and hip snap. That's what gets the bell moving whenever you do. The, uh, the usual warm-up I would do to work into the kettlebell exercise. At first I just start RDLing, remaining and deadlifting the kettlebell to warm up. because it gives you a good stretch in the hamstrings, gets you in that groove of keeping your arch and uh, get the hips moving. I, do, I would normally do a set of five, a set of ten, a set of fifteen, a set of twenty, the RDL. Then I move on to the two hands way. Same idea. I thought it was good to start out with five reps of that, then 10, then 15, then 20. This pace works great for the partner. And with the kettlebells, you don't have to be the same strength, because you can each have your own kettlebell. You don't have to change weights. You just take turns. I do five, you do five. I do 10, you do 10. And that keeps the pace nice. Keeps the rest intervals and the work intervals right about the same. It's perfect. As you go uh, after the swing, uh, at first, before I learned to snatch proficiently, I would just do one hand swings. Again, with the 5, 10, 15, 20 rep speed. And that's a pretty good workout right there. You do switch five right, five left, switching off with a partner every set. It's a good workout. The snatch is a lot harder than the swing, even the one-hand swing, because you're moving the kettlebell a lot further. But the snatch takes some technical provision. The only thing you really have to learn to snatch well is the time. I'm going to do this, and it's going to hurt. This is what you don't do. <laughs> doing this because I care about you guys. I started out with the swing over. Watch the kettlebell at the top. This hurts. Cool. 
boom, every time the kettle bell is going this high. It's going all the way up over my head. Half lockout, boom, in the floor. You can slow it down a little bit with your grip, but it still hurts. If you learn to do the snatch right, you never pull that kettle bell higher than that lockout position. In other words, I'm only pulling the kettle bell to this height. I'm going to punch under it once it gets there. I can't slow this down for it. It doesn't work. But I'm only pulling it to about here. I'm going to rotate it to catch it. Yeah, in other words, when the bell gets here, my hand can move. I mean, the bell is at that top of its trajectory. It's going to be almost still. Now he's going to gently punch under it. That way you don't have to, number one, you don't have to pull it as high. You'll be able to do a lot more reps. But more importantly, you won't beat the crap out of your forearms, which you'll give up before you get far uh, with the kettlebell snatch in your forearm. starting out with the RDL for the warm-up, two hand swings, and then one hand snatches, all done for the 5, 10, 15, 20. That's a pretty good cardio workout, pretty good conditioning workout. But, uh, it's kind of, you know, they got to start branching out from this. The thing about the kettlebell is, as you get fit, you can do lots and lots of reps. You do beat the crap out. You may just beat your shoulders up. That sheer repetition tires out your back. I mean, once you get strong, if you really think that you can do a few hundred snatches, swings, and pull and pull throughs with you know, 75 pounds three days a week, and you, you, you probably won't like it. It's gonna it's a really rough type of cardio, especially if you still want to lift. So the kettlebells, the way I use them now, honestly, the swings are still a great dynamic exercise. They're like speed work in the left side method. They're, uh, they're applied. Swings are plyometric because you're basically getting a fast negative and you're quickly reversing it. And that's what plyometric really is. Just a fast reversal at the bottom. So plyos are for power, and force development, not so much for cardio. So the swing, I use that now just as a speed tool, not as an endless repetition exercise because the endless repetitions, you'll, you'll, you'll eventually outgrow them. The, uh, the, the snatch is, the snatch is great. The, the, the kettlebell snatch is the best snatch for someone who doesn't want to get too technically proficient, doesn't want to spend too much time. Two-hand snatch, even in the, even a two-hand power snatch, it takes a great deal of shoulder flexibility. You get good at it. You have to learn to pull with straight arms. It, takes some, it really takes some investment. It's worth it if you like snatching. But, you know, the kettlebell snatch is really a lot easier to learn. And uh, it's fun. It has all the benefits of the Olympic lifts. But it's a lot more fun, a lot easier to learn, a lot more forgiving. It doesn't require, it just doesn't require so much training up front. So the snatch, I use it as just, yeah, keep a little all around quickness, keep a little bit of that overhead strength. It is a main lift. What I found worked out better, ironically, for my cardio was the barbell. And a workout I got from a guy named Ethan Reeves, who's the strength coach at uh, Lake Forest. Great innovator, and uh, he was a real nice guy.